What's going on, everybody? Josh Engelman for awesomeo.com, and I am back with my NBA DFS contenders on FanDuel for Wednesday, January 13th. Now, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you know when this and all of our other content goes live. Follow me on Twitter, at Josh Engelman, so you can get updates to these sim results as we get closer to lock. And finally, let me know in the comments section who are your favorite options on FanDuel for tonight's slate. It was supposed to be 10 games, now it's only eight. I think that's a little bit more manageable. We've got Blake Griffin, Anthony Davis, Jeremy Grant, Damian Lillard, and De'Aaron Fox on the outside looking in. Who will be my top five, my favorites for Wednesday's slate? It's time to find out. Alrighty, first up, number five, I'm going Malik Beasley. Small forward eligibility, 5,800, projected for 31 fantasy points with a goal of about 42. Uh, he hits that goal 11% of the time, Sim in the 23% range. I have him playing 35 minutes. Usage is 23%, and it appears that's going to be what his usage rate is, even with Carl Anthony Towns in the game. If Towns is out, I probably like Beasley a little bit more. Baseline projection, 24 and a half and two. He doesn't really do all that much else other than score. He's a 0.86 fantasy point per minute guy normally. That's exactly where I have him in this spot. It's a pretty neutral pace matchup. Uh, this is just a sign, really, that small forward is incredibly weak today, and that's enough to get Beasley in the mix. He's a mid-tier price guy, 5,800, so he works in balance bills or stars and scrubs. There's just not a ton to go on at small forward, so I'm taking a bet on someone that's a little bit more volatile, a bigger standard deviation, a guy that can score in bunches. That's what I'm going to try to bet on at small forward today, and that's why I'm going to Malik Beasley. Like I said, small forward, kind of gross. Number four, Kyle Anderson, 5,400, projected for 31 fantasy points. The goal is 41. Now, he's not hitting that goal all that frequently, 9% of the time. Uh, Kyle Anderson does not have a big standard deviation on his scoring, so it's kind of tight. Finishes in the optimal 25% of the time. I'm giving him 29 minutes, 23% usage. Now, he does a little bit more, 14, 6, and 4 as the baseline. He's normally a 0.92 fantasy point per minute guy, but he's got a much bigger usage rate with Ja Morant off the floor, with Jaron Jackson off the floor. So he is handling it a bit more. He does get to take on Minnesota, which is obviously awesome for him. Their defense is terrible. This is a bit of a pace up spot for Memphis as well. They're gaining about three possessions. So that's an extra fantasy point in Kyle Anderson's favor. Again, there's just not that much to like at small forward. So the combination of Anderson and Beasley saves you a little bit of money or at least keeps you neutral for the rest of your spots. And I think they've got really nice chances of putting up that, you know, mid to high 30 score where you might not get that GPP goal, but it might be just enough to put you in an optimal lineup construction. All right, number three, I'm going Trey Young, point guard eligibility, 8,800, projected for 44. You're looking for 53. I think he hits the goal 21% of the time. I think he's in the optimal 26% of the time. Big minutes, I'm giving him 36. Monstrous usage, 34%. He's a 1.2 fantasy point per minute guy, and that's exactly where I have him. Bit of a pace down spot, actually, for Atlanta against Phoenix. They actually lose two and a half possessions. That doesn't matter to me at all. I'm still very interested in Trey Young. I just don't think that he should be sub 9K given his ability to score. I mean, I have him projected for 27 points, 9 assists, and 4 rebounds. That is a guy, those baseline numbers, uh, that should be a guy that's like 92, 93, 9400. I think the upside is there for Trey Young. I want to get in on the ground floor, so I'm loading up at 8800. Now, number two, I'm surprised, honestly. I'm going Julius Randle, power forward eligibility, 9,100. I've got him projected for 48 fantasy points, and you're looking for 54. I think he does that 25% of the time, and as you can see, we're taking a step up in tiers. Randle has separated himself from Trey Young. He's in the optimal 32% of the time. Monster minutes, I gave him 38. His points per minute are up quite a bit. I'm projecting him as a 1.25 fantasy point per minute guy. <laughs> He's projected for 24 and a half and 11 and a half plus six assists. His facilitating has been amazing so far this season. Big time pace up spot against Brooklyn. Knicks are going to gain about four possessions. And based on my assumptions right now, I don't think that Kevin Durant is going to play today. Now he could. I'm just expecting him to rest on the back end 
of a back-to-back. He did previously. I don't know if the Kyrie situation will change that, but I think they're going to try to treat him a bit slowly. He's still coming off of a major injury. So if Durant isn't playing, that's even better for Julius Randle, and that's enough to put him in my number two spot. Now, before we get to number one, one last reminder, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and follow me on Twitter, at Josh Engelman, so you can get the sim updates. I am not on Live Before Lock, just a strategy show tonight, so keep your eyes peeled around 6 p.m. for my final sim updates. Now, as I mentioned, I'm assuming Kevin Durant isn't playing today, which means 8K point guard Karis LeVert is my top contender for the day. 45 fantasy point projection, goal of 50. He hits the goal 32% of the time. He's in the optimal 36% of the time. 34 minutes, 35% usage. It's a 1.3 fantasy point per minute guy with those terms. 24, 8, and 5 as the projection. Slight pace down spot against the Knicks, but there's no defensive presence to speak of. And don't get me started on what they're actually ranked from a defensive rating perspective. That is fraudulent. We can dig into that later. But for right now, I see no way if Kevin Durant is out tonight, Karis LeVert is the number one play on the slate, bar none. You know, unless somebody else really random gets ruled out. Alrighty, guys, thank you for joining me. Again, watch the NBA Strategy Show, myself and Alex Baker, today at 10 a.m. Eastern. If you haven't, uh, if it's already past 10 a.m. Eastern time, then uh, go back and watch it. It'll be on our YouTube channel. Like the video, you guys know the drill there. I will be back again tomorrow for Thursday Slate with another edition of the NBA DFS Contenders. Good luck, guys.